Hello viewers, welcome to our lecture series on CSR and uh, we are going to discuss about the future of CSR issues and challenges. In the and this is going to be part 2 of uh, the lecture on future of CSR issues and challenges. In the part 1 we had a discussion on the emerging dimension of uh, corporate social justice and uh, which was supported by uh, a leading article published in Harvard Business Review. Continuing the, d the discussion on the topic, uh, we are going to take another dimension uh, here in this very lecture where we are going to uh, discuss about testing companies commitment to social responsibility. Because over a period of time, it, we realize that uh, with the emergence of pandemic like COVID-19 and then there are certain, uh, you know, uh, anticipations also that the world is going to witness some kind of recession in their uh, trade cycle. So, keeping that in mind, what is uh, going to be the company's commitment towards social responsibility? There was another article, uh, you know, in HBR and uh, I thought it pertinent to present before you. So, with the likelihood of recession in forthcoming years, uh, increasing every day. Companies are now thinking or anticipating that uh, there can be a possibility of recession in forthcoming years and we cannot deny to this very fact. And uh, with, the, with the increasing uh, trend or anticipation of such kind of recession in years to come, the corporate leaders they are being tasked with navigating these turbulent times and cost cutting is basically a conventional strategy to deploy. Whenever we, we uh, talk about corporate uh, any kind of recession which company is going to witness uh, we basically look at the cutting of cost as a remedy, as a, as a you can say first aid to this uh, uh, very, uh, you know, news whenever we anticipate that any kind of recession or depression company is going to witness in the, in the environment or economy is going to witness. So, they find this to be a, a, a part of conventional strategy to deploy. And unfortunately, uh, if we look at the history uh, or, or whatever has happened in the past, it indicates that CSR, ESG, that is environmental, social uh, and, and governance, environment, social, uh, you know, the social ca causes and governance, ESG and purpose of uh, initiatives are typically first on the list to freeze or what you call as underfunding uh, uh, during uh, recessionary times. So, whenever the recession, uh, the news of recession, recession comes, there are certain areas where the underfunding or cutting of funds, it is, it is typically, you know, expected and uh, the, the data indicates that CSR and ESG, these are basically uh, the areas where the, the, this kind of uh, cost cutting is done at the very first instance. So, the moment news comes, they are supposed to, they are first on the list to freeze activities, that these are the activities which are supposed to be freezed for the time being or they, they are going to witness some kind of underfunding, they are going to bear some kind of underfunding during recessionary times. And this test is coming at a time when CEOs, they have made significant strides in, uh, you know, tying ESG to profitability. So, so th this is a dichotomy that on one hand you are saying that uh, m m the moment we are witnessing or finding any news of recession to come, the, the first in the list to freeze items are CSR and ESG. And, and this kind of test is coming at a time when the CEOs, they have made significant strides in tying ESG to profitability. And the research indicates that with 70% 70, 70 of US CEOs, they have acknowledged that ESG improves financial performance of the company. And it, it has increased from, uh, you know, the 37% just last year as per a recent KPMG survey. So, the KPMG survey is indicating that 70 percent of CEOs working in US, they have acknowledged that ESG is going to improve financial performance of the companies. Earlier, it was 37 percent and now 70 percent of them, they acknowledge it. And still, the ESG and CSR, it is on the first uh, uh, in the list, uh, in the, uh, it, is, it is at the top when it comes to the list of uh, list to freeze items, when, whenever the company is going to uh, anticipate any kind of uh, recession. And still, 59 percent of CEOs say that they have planned to pause or reconsider their ESG efforts. So, 59 percent of CEOs, they are saying that they, they have planned to pause or reconsider their ESG efforts. Now, the question comes, what are the reasons for prioritizing investment in corporate citizenship or what you call as corporate social responsibility. So, my dear learner, learners, we need to remember, we need to first acknowledge and we need to first accept this that despite, uh, you know, uh, 
realizing that it is so much uh, beneficial for the, the profitability of the corporate entities, still somehow these activities they are uh, supposed to be on the basis of the previous literature available on in the field of CSR it is said. So, this is going to be a future you know a question for future of CSR and that is why I thought it pertinent to present before you that we should also have th this dimension in our mind that researchers indicate that there is a positive relationship between the ESG activities, CSR activities and profitabilities of the company, profitability of a company and still the companies somehow they are not uh, taking it as the first and foremost activity to be performed and, and there are certain points where companies are companies are basically going to cut the fund which is allocated for such companies whenever the, the tough time comes. So, what are the reasons for prioritizing investment in corporate citizenship? We need to first understand. If we understand that why do we need to prioritize our investment in corporate citizenship, we will never put it in the list of uh, you know the items which are supposed to be freezed for the time being. First one is the first reason for that is your workforce is making employment decisions based on corporate purpose, commitments and actions. Gone are the days when the workforce or the employees of a company they used to join a company only because of the salary. Although the salary is something which is very important, the perks and perquisites, the remuneration that is important, significant, I am not uh, discounting their significance. But now we are living in, in an era where the workforce is not making employment decision based on only salary or remuneration. Their decisions are based on the corporate purpose, commitments and actions. The company which I am joining, what is the purpose of my company in which I am working? What kind of commitment my company has made? What are the actions in which my company is involved? And that is some, these are the questions which, which most of the employees nowadays, they ask before joining any institution. So, recruiting and retaining the talent, it continues to be a challenge in every sector nowadays. And Although the job security and fair wages will be top of mind during an economic downturn, employee engagement and corporate commitment to social impact, it, it is basically driven largely by CSR teams and, and it remains critical. So, my dear learners, we need to understand that although the, the payment, the fair wages, the job security, it is at the top of, top of the mind uh, during any kind of economic downturn, but employee engagement and corporate commitment to social impact driven largely by CSR teams, it remains critical. And what is the new trend? The Edelman's special report uh, indicates, um, the report which is on such issue, it indicates that trust in the workplace, this is a term which they have highlighted as a keyword, trust in the workplace found that 7 out of 10 employees wanted their job to bring societal impact and they were calling it a strong expectation or deal breaker while considering a job. So, they were saying that this is something which is very crucial when I have to uh, decide if I am on a crossroad and I have to make a decision which company to join. So, this, the, these, this factor trust in the workplace is going to be the most significant factor for deciding uh, what you call as uh, you know the breaking the deal or what you call as the, the expectation which is strongly which is having the strong comparative strength as compared to other, other factors. This was basically said in the Edelman's special report. And the, your employees will have, will, will leave to find a purpose driven employer if your company is not one. If your company is not having any purpose for, uh, for society, for, for the, the world at large, then of course, your company is, your employee will find a better employer which is basically having a purpose, the company which is a purpose driven company, they are going to join that. This is basically, this I am not saying, this is said by this report, by Edelman's uh, report and it indicated that trust in the workplace is the most significant factor. So, this was about the employee. The second point is customer as a stakeholder. Now, what is the trend? Your customers, they make purchase, purchase decisions based on corporate purpose, commitment and actions. Gone are the days when customers used to purchase only because of quality or only because that they wish to buy a product from your company 
or they are supposed to be the brand uh, loyal because your product is tried and tested and they are not going to change. Nowadays companies are, uh, the customers are while purchasing a product, they in their buying decision process, the corporate purpose, commitment and action is one of the significant factor in their decision making process or what you call as, as a factor uh, for making their decisions. Consumers are even more uh, discerning during increased times of uncertainty which makes reputation and transparency uh, the key. While consumers are more attuned to rising prices, they dif the, the differentiator is uh, supposed to be the brands which upholds their commitment to society through good times and bad. So whatever is the time, whether you are uh, passing through a good time or a bad time, if your commitments, if you, you as a company, you are upholding your commitment to society, then this is going to become a differentiator for, for the customers while taking a decision that whether I should stick to this company, whether I should keep on buying the product of this company or I need to make a change into my decision. So in fact, according to the 2021 Porter uh, Novelli Purpose Premium Index, which is known as PPI, that we call it Purpose Premium uh, Index, 73% of consumers, they say that uh, to win their support, companies must show how they are supporting communities and the environment. So this is the latest research uh, which is known as the Porter's Novelli Purpose Premium Index that 73% of the consumers, which is a significant number, they believe that if, if the companies want to win their support, they should show, they should reflect how they are supporting communities and the environment. If they are able to reflect that, if their activities, uh, if they are in their actions, it is being reflected, the customers are going to support. So this is another dimension, this is another point why this is going to be a, a, a future trend that companies are supposed to be increasingly socially responsible. Next one is investor as a stakeholder. Now the question comes, your investors make decisions based on corporate purpose and actions. So your purpose and action is going to decide the, the decision made by investors. One of the core strategies of ESG investing is risk mitigation. So one of the most significant strategies of ESG investing is risk mitigation and ESG related issues are material and they can uh, cause financial or reputational damage also. They are basically very significant for an investor uh, while making a decision whether to invest my capital, my money into uh, this company or not. So this ESG related issue, they are going to be, be very material and they are very particular about it and that is why the ESG reporting is increasingly becoming important for, by, for the corporate entities. In their annual report, they somehow voluntarily they are reporting on, on the parameters of ESG that what we are doing for that. Because it is the point where you can attract your uh, investors by the way of highlighting your activities, your contribution. So especially during volatile periods in the market, investors want to know that these social risks are being tracked and managed at the highest levels in the company or not. They understand that. And in March 2022, Merrill Lynch issued a report to their investors on the importance of the, the term S, the word S in ESG, in which they asserted that because social factors underpin the key inputs to economic growth, managing and monitoring social indicators, it has never been as important as it has become today. So they have highlighted the role of the word S, the alphabet S in the acronym of ESG, that we, it has gained huge importance, huge significance in the corporate discourse nowadays and, and they are highlighting it. So this indicates that it is a way to attract their investors. Now, if you talk about the company's reputation, your company's reputation is intris intrinsically linked to corporate purpose and actions. The Edelman Trust barometer shows that trust in companies is slipping. All it takes is one poor choice to flip the perception of a company to disdain. Community needs uh, will only increase during the economic downturns, downturns, including basic needs such as shelter, food, education. So this is something which is a, a minimum requirement, which is uh, the basic need of any customer. And the continued support uh, the corporations provide to non-profits through financial investment, the employee volunteerism, 
by the way of their product donation and the non-profit board service the SNESG it is critical in maintaining strong relationship with your uh, key stakeholders so it we have actually realized that the role of S is very important in ESG and your corporate responsibility team is your offense and defense both for ensuring your reputation remains strong if you really wish that your reputation what is your reputation if you really wish to ensure a good reputation you need to you need to basically use this uh, this term as the, this alphabet s uh, responsibly you need to take care of the concerns so your corporate responsibility team is your offense as well as your defense if you are, you are doing positively it is going to become your defense mechanism if you are doing negatively it is it is going to be recorded as an offense so if you really wish to ensure that your reputation remains strong you need to uh, use it as a defense so that uh, the society at large is having a positive image about you so my dear learners by by in this dimension in this segment of uh, uh, my lecture i tried to tell you that what is going what kind of test companies are going to uh, to witness in terms of their commitment to social responsibility and it was basically uh, authored by it was basically based on an article published in harvard business review uh, in december 2022 that is last year and it was published by uh, Car uh, carolyn uh, berkovic uh, and other authors are there and their title of the article was 2023 will test companies commitment to social responsibility so we duly acknowledge uh, their contribution to this uh, uh, segment of csr they have highlighted what is going to be the future face of csr so after understanding the corporate social justice and uh, you know what kind of Uh, commitments which are going to be expected from the companies uh, when it comes to csr there is another dimension called cpr which which is has now become a buzzword and we say that csr needs cpr that is corporate sustainability and politics so another dimension to csr which is being called as a future step of csr so corporate sustainability it has gone mainstream now and most of the companies they have uh, taken the meaningful steps to improve their own environmental performance they are basically taking care of the the environment and sustainability they understand that without uh, ensuring the sustainable ecosystem we can't uh, uh, continue for long if we really want our company to be sustainable for long we need to create an eco ecosystem which is uh, which is basically uh, uh, sustainable so although the corporate uh, political actions uh, are very often blamed for this that they are having a negative impact while corporate political actions such as lobbying can have a greater impact on environmental uh, quality they are ignored in the most current sustainability matrix and that is why this this topic of csr needs cpr it uh, became a buzzword so it is time for these matrix to be expanded to critically assess firms based on sustainability impact of their public policy positions what is my position as a company towards the public policy which is being implemented by the government uh, of of any country wherever i am performing so what is my position as a company so for that we need to develop a metric we need to develop a parameter that what is my contribution towards that uh, cpr that is uh, to enable such assessments my, my company as a uh, uh, as an entity it must become as transparent about their corporate pol political responsibility as we are towards csr so there is a new uh, extension to the term corporate social responsibility that there is a political responsibility also with which we are entrusted with so we are shouldered with the responsibility of uh, the the um, taking care of the political concerns also which we call as corporate political responsibility and that is why we say that csr needs cpr also so if we really wish that the corporate social corporate should act in a responsible manner corporate need to clarify its stand towards the political uh, policies towards the policy which your country as a uh, to which your country or the government as a policy maker has uh, you know uh, framed for your country so for their part rating systems must demand such information from firms and they should include evaluations of corporate political activity while doing the assessment of corporate environmental responsibility and when we say cpr basically we are indicating towards the concern 
uh, of your company towards the environmental issues for which of course the government is going to show its own concern because they are basically supposed to take care of uh, those uh, problems which our society at large is, is going to face. So, CSR needs CPR which means we need to be very clear about uh, the company uh, as, a, as an entity and we should try to ensure that corporate political actions such as lobbying, uh, you know, it can have a greater impact on environmental quality and they should contribute positively to this very cause where the companies are ensuring that their positioning is very proper and they are, they are pro uh, uh, environmental concern or I would say they should uh, have the eco-friendly attitude. So, my dear learners, in this way we had a discussion on uh, another aspect of uh, the future of CSR which says that CSR needs CPR corporate sustainability and politics and it, it was basically based on the article published by Thomas P. Uh, P. Leon and other authors published in California Management Review uh, in the year 2022, in the spring of 2022. Now the question comes how CSR grows and resonates within the firms because uh, initially the company started having their own CSR department, they were uh, working uh, in a vibrant manner, the reporting is also done. But the way it grows and resonates within the firms, that is something which is very significant for us to understand because that is going to be another uh, uh, future point uh, for showing the concern of corporate entities where the companies are supposed to uh, pay some attention, greater attention I would say. So, in the quest for corporate social responsibility, we often see, uh, uh, only see that uh, the tip of the iceberg. We basically ignore uh, that what is there be behind this uh, uh, very show of CSR because companies are spending some amount on listed CSR activities or the identified uh, concerns of society in which they are living. But we do not understand that uh, the way it functions, the CSR departments, the public commitments and the grand gestures, that is something which we need to understand. So, the if we look at uh, uh, if you look beneath the surface, it, there lies a coordinated, there lies a very uh, systematic and planned coordinated system involving the entire organization. It is not only the CSR department which is working, it is not only the trust which you have created, it is basically the, the contribution of the entire organization as a whole, where functional departments such as if you take accounting, human resources, procurement, they are playing their vital roles. So, each and every department is, is, is acting uh, or, or you can say contributing positively to the cause of uh, the CSR that is company should uh, be socially responsible and, and this is the way CSR grows and resonates within the firms. So, initially we feel that it is only the duty of CSR department, it is only the duty of a segment of a company, a department of a company. But if you look beneath the surface, you find a, a very systematic and coordinated system which involves the entire organization and, and it evolves uh, through the stages. The progression of CSR implementation is, a, is in a phased manner. The creation of, uh, creation of CSR department is not merely a public statement. Neither is it, uh, to, is it to simply take the role of implementer of new regulations and procedures nor we say that uh, our objective is only to create a department. It is basically the purpose behind having this CSR department is to act as a filter between uh, the external demands for CSR implementation and the needs and uh, operations of the corporation. So, what is external demand and what are basically the needs and uh, operations of the corporation between the two we have to find a way out where we can actually uh, uh, you know filter the needs uh, or the expectations of the society and we can uh, communicate the same to the corporate entities or to the, to all the departments so this comes in context uh, in which responsible uh, responsible leadership is increasingly becoming a, a regular issue in corporate sphere with companies subject to both internal as well as external expectations so, my dear learners, this is the way this CSR is going to be implemented and we feel that it is, it, it is basically beginning with the, with the creation of a department only, but it grows and resonates within the firms in due course of time with, with the continued uh, efforts, with the commitment of all the department. And for that, we need a mature CSR team. 
we need a uh, more mature uh, csr teams more responsible csr teams and what they are supposed to do from uh, tackling climate change to addressing social inequalities corporate social responsibility is more urgent than ever so when we understand the future of csr is is full of is going to be full of challenges we need to understand that these important concern need to be uh, taken care of in a uh, mature manner or or more maturely and more responsibly but especially for large multinational companies systematically integrating these critical social environmental and ethical concerns into their routine business operations it can pose a substantial challenge before the company and for the, for that many companies they have built dedicated csr department to drive such efforts but still i feel that the recent research suggests that a strong csr department does not necessarily indicate effective implementation what we needed is that we need to understand that each and every segment of the company they they need to have this feel that it is the part and parcel of our uh, activities in whatever activity i am into as a part of the company whether i am into marketing or i am into hr or i am into it or i am into ib in all segments of uh, my company's operations i need to act socially responsible so the rules are changing companies will be forced to be more responsible more socially responsible in their advertising their communications their pr strategy and social media and there is a move towards csr for public institutions and ngos and there is increasing interest in personal responsibility especially for those in senior positions it is going to be their personal responsibility to ensure that company is socially responsible companies acting in a responsible manner so smart companies they will look uh, uh, more into the social value of their brands climate change may move down to the down the list of the um, of the priorities to be replaced by more concern with worker rights and human rights that is something which we are going to witness so my dear learners the rules are going to change integrated and simple reporting is 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 supposed to be uh, the part and parcel of the game and there is a need for simpler reporting standards and simpler measurement indicators and uh, behemoth such as the global reporting initiative is at a gri it will be simplified for easier application so with this my dear learners i try to put before you the future uh, uh, of csr and what are the challenges which we are going to witness as a company in front of you i hope you must have understood and enjoyed today's lecture of mine thank you so much